count down to releasing this lot of uh, sparrow head. Not many days now, hopefully, well, probably just after the weekend, I just think. These are all going out, but I've got a couple of things to do to stay out the field before they can go. I'm being haunted by a herring gull. I don't know if you can see it. Hang on a second. Is that bird? He's there every day, sat on that post. Doesn't seem to go anywhere or do anything, he's just there. And he's watching me. So when we took the golf course on, all this hedge was uh, a lot of dead elm, a lot of old collapsed blackboard, uh, basically it was rubbish, and a lot of it was growing 15, 20 foot out into the field. So we have taken all the rubbish out and uh, got rid of it and replaced the hedge with nice new quicks. So it's all quick thorns, so it is a monoculture apart from the bits of um, blackthorn and all the elms which are going to probably shoot again from the bottom um, but obviously if I look at the cattle out here now yum yum, lovely bit of grass but they're going to end up rubbing the reds, knocking these things over and eating and pulling out my new hawthorns I don't want to do that um, I also want to put some grass seed down on this bit of rough soil I've just levelled out with a skid steer so temporarily we're going to put up a fence on the edge of the grass just to give well, the new grass seed and the trees half a chance. Right, we're dealing with creosote fence um, and we don't want it on our skin at all because it's nasty. This is only a temporary fence, so I'm not overly concerned about nice straight lines, or which you're not going to get down there because it's like a dog's own leg anyway. Um, so it's probably going to be just a couple of strands of barbs, maybe, um, maybe electric wire in the middle of it if I can bridge the gap of the gateway over there if I've got time. So it is literally just post every sort of five, six meters. Uh, it is a temporary fence, so just bear that in mind. I suppose they don't, but they're very little use, they're flat on the floor, so time to make the basher.
So I've turned the engine off to put the last bit on. That's partially because the only way to truly release the pressure on the hydraulics is to turn the engine off and then operate the levers in both directions. One of the beauties of levers over buttons is I can do that, I can drop the pressure. Uh, we should make connecting this up easy. <coughs> Once we've got the dead flies out of it. Oh, first we get to mention, I saw my first swallow yesterday. It is 17th of April today, so 16th of April I saw my first swallow. Pretty sure I heard one a week ago. But if I don't see it, it's not proved. Good to go, let's go and bash some steaks. I've still got the foot down on the front of the post rammer, so if I go over a steep bank like that over there, I'll end up digging a chunk out. So rather than lift the foot up and drive that way and put the foot back down, I'm taking the lazy option and going round it. Lazy, sensible. I'll go sensible actually. Okay, so we can release the pressure. Again, I already set off all of them because without that, I'll be able to connect that back pipe. I'll show you what I mean. So, hydraulics uh, these pipes carry a tremendous amount of pressure. I mean, thousands of psi or bar or whatever, whatever measurement you use. But if you try and undo one of these pipes, take it out of the socket. I'll just bring you around and show you. What I mean. You've got the male part here that slots into the female in there. Um, but if this is under pressure, it will not come out or it will not go in. So that was the reason why, before I left the tractor, to turn the engine off, I operated the levers in both directions. It basically equalizes the pressure in both of these feeds or in the pipes, any of these pipes. The pressure should be basically neutralized. So, you back in there. so now, if I did a good job, this should just plug straight in. Like that. And that. I'm glad I did that, because if it didn't, I'd look stupid. So taking it off again. Pipes now in, so these uh, these three levers here are directly connected by cables to those three levers at the top there. So operating those levers in the cab, I can push or pull this through the service block and operate whichever of these valves and you know use the hydraulics, which we're going to need to bash these posts in. Right, this first post is a bit awkward because I got a tree on one side, the ditch on the other. I might have to swing the. Yep, I think I'm going to swing him ring. Bear with me.
One down, four more tensioners to go. Tighter I can keep the line, tighter I can keep the wire. That was a little bold, but there's a bit of grass you want to put there, so I don't mind. Right, let's knock these in. Can't find your barbed wire, so it looks like I've used it all. Road trip. We're off to Mole Valley.
snow that they're going to work tomorrow. Welcome to Moor Valley. Our local Mall Valley store it used to be Tony Cullimore Services, but uh, Mall Valley took it on last year. This is where all our fencing and everything else comes from. I know I can get it cheaper elsewhere, but it's the convenience, isn't it? That's it, back home. Check some seed about. Put some wire up. Seed. We've got 40 minutes to lunch time, we might as well do a bit.
definitely get a bit of rain. Although we're not forecast a lot, but the birds will have most of that. Doesn't spring like a bit, you wait. Uh, there's not much point in seeing that out there yet. I'm going to have to um, do something about the nettles first and I'll come back and see that later. Right then, so <coughs> again I'll repeat this is only a temporary fence. Once the hedge is established um, and the grass is set and everything, this will, this will probably come down. Um, but in saying that, uh, because the ditch is on the other side of the hedge, there's always a chance that we may even keep this fence and um, take the one down next door. <coughs> Just because it makes cleaning the ditch out easier. So I'm going to leave a bit of slack on this. There's a great big ivy. She's dead to be cutting off. Big old ivy stem going up here, so I'm actually going to let. Uh, twist the wire around this post and I'm going to tack it onto the ivy. I never tack wire to trees, I hate seeing wire tacked to trees, but to ivy, that's a different matter. stretch or use the use the persuader no need for monkey chains on this That little bit of a dip in the wire there, that's as tight as I need it. Hopefully that'll start the cat leading our new edge. <laughs> 